actually just for the sake of getting a nice preview running already of the character I'm going to I'm going to add some material colors so yeah we're using right now material colors for the viewport so I'm just gonna add a couple so this one would be metal I'm just gonna go into viewport display I like this to be that at the top and I'm gonna turn this Okay, let's do this lightly bluish like that. It's going to be the metal. And then we have that one over here that's hair. So it's going to be this very orange, saturated red orange. A bit like that, a bit darker. That's good. The bolts are going to share that, not the modifiers, nope, uh, yes, the materials. Then we're gonna have backpack, which is again going to be this like baby blue, but way brighter. The belt and the inner backpack will share that material. This one also shares the material of the mask. <laughs> if you have a if you hear the plastic bag in the background, that's the cat playing with it. <laughs> I wish I had a camera right now to show it. <laughs> um to continue with the materials, we have the rubber. <laughs> Careful. Oh. She's having fun. We essentially have three different colors, four actually, four different colors for the rubber. So we have this kind of purple-ish, blue, pretty dark. We have another one over here, which is orange. I'm just gonna copy over the material over here actually. I might actually change this material just to orange because they are going to be in the same color anyway. So this is going to be purple, this is going to be gray, and aha, uh -huh. and there's going to be black. Assign height. Okay. Assign all of these guys. There we go. I'm also going to make the black a little bit bluish. Um, this one also gets the black one. And there's going to be another one which is blue. She's going at it aggressively. <laughs> All right, the cat has been removed, <laughs> confined to her own quarters. <laughs> so let's assign the blue material. And the same material can just be applied to the not black, to the lips.
Now, sadly, these are going to be submerged in the mask. So I am thinking... Yes, got them all selected. If I can just toggle them in front. Of course, now we're going to see them here as well, but that's fine for now. Hmm. Yeah, I wish there would be a better visibility hierarchy, I guess. Anyway. This is definitely helping a lot with uh, pre-visualization. There we go. And now there's definitely this area at the belt which requires a bit of extra detail. So I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier at this point. And I might just... I'm not sure if I should apply... Yeah, let's just apply that modifier as well. Get rid of these edges. Just a bit too much. Now, over here, what's the best way to do this? I guess I'm just going to bevel this. Yeah, bevel this area over here. And this area over here. Actually, let's just isolate this. So I can get this, this entire thing. Beveling. Actually, let me... I'm just gonna move this over. So we get that slanted edge. Here we go. Now beveling. And just a little bit. And I'm just gonna extrude along normals and extrude it in. I think this is the easiest way we get these little insets over here. But if I add the subdivision surface modifier back, then we definitely get issues over here. So what I might just do is to keep this sharp, we could again add with shift E the creases. I think that's a, that's a fine way of doing it right now. Yes, I'm just going to do that. This way we don't add any unnecessary geometry in all of this. And we can just keep all of this as it is. Yes. That's just, we're never going to see the side, but still, let's just add it here as well. Ah, something went wrong over here. Aha, another edge mist. Nice. Is this one missing, of course? Okay, now we can assign the materials here as well. So we're going to need the um, a completely new one, actually. Orange, definitely. And then we can just pick, not blue, but... Huh, which one was it? Backpack. Interesting. This can be blue light. Let's 
It's already there, of course. And then we get another one. Let's actually actually just base this on blue light. So we can just make another one from here and call this blue gray. And let's just already change the color a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this entire area by just hiding these loops over here. And that triangle right there. Hide. Select this entire thing and assign it the blue gray material. This can be a bit more saturated. There we go. And then I'm going to select this loop over here. Hide it. Select these faces with L and assign them the orange material. There we go. And we can already see... Ah. <laughs> the shape doesn't quite match. The proportions are a bit off. Or at least it seems that way. They're not fully consistent in the concept art. Um, but that's fine. We can also just expand this over here a little bit. Okay, let's just continue from here. So we have all the materials basically set up. And the next thing, just like we added some detail to the belt, would be nice to add the same to the mask over here. So in the concept, I can show it right now actually, we have this nice little, um, little crease over here. So this is sort of engraving this would be nice to add as well in the model. So you can actually really quickly just modify the curves on this guy. Just because it doesn't quite match the expression. That's in the concept. Yeah, it's good enough. So back to this. So we have this curve over here. And if we look at the turntable, we can see it's right at this point. And then in the middle, we have this little offshoot over here. Right there. Sort of the same size. It's a bit dif mis misplaced in the turnaround, but that's fine. Um, yes, and then it's essentially the same thing over here. We select these edges over here, bevel them, really make sure that the that the scale is set to 1 on the object, otherwise you're going to have problems. Actually, I'm going to undo just to get the size right. Let's just get the adjust last operation. Yeah. In the concept, this, this little engraving is definitely thicker than this one, noticeably thicker. I wonder if this can be adjusted so there's always like a consistent minimal thickness to it. But it's not, it's not necessary. It's not super important. Um, but yes, let's select this again and then Alt-E, extrude along normals and extrude it inwards. And again, because we have the subdivision surface modifier, it's going to have all of these 
issues. So we can just select these edges and shift E one. Of course, that's not all of them. We can also have the modifier enabled for edit mode. This one should be one as well. And over here, this one as well, as well as ah, these guys, not the entire thing, but let's see if we can only select these. Still some missing. What if these ones are also set to one? Oh, it's on the back where it really goes crazy. <laughs> because, oh yes. Because of course, it's a solidify modifier. We can avoid this by just using rim only or only rim over here and it will not duplicate the it will not try to solidify these little tiny elements over here which of course are going to go off in all kinds of directions they are all going to be sol getting thickness based on their fate on based on, because, yeah based on their own normals uh yes that is essentially it for well, that little detail we have this guy over here, this can actually be lowered a little bit. And yeah, let's just remove that face. It's going to cause big issues over here. Um, oops, merge by distance. And these are going to be merged. And now should be somewhat okay. I'm actually going to apply the solidify modifier now. I don't really want these issues. There we go. Hmm. Let's just use the, the tool rip edge. And I can rip this edge in, scale it down. Actually, not scale it down. Let's just watch, look at it from the back. Alt V, X. We get that little edge back. Yes. Uh, sort of, almost. We still need to, ah, um, merge by distance, split an edge over here from there to there, and then merge these two faces. And then we can just select these edges, shift E, one, there we go. Fill this in, uh, perfect. Oh, not vertex painting, oops. Oh, now there's this issue over here. So since I applied the solidify modifier, there's definitely some extra thickness that landed right here. This should just be removed. We don't want these faces. Same thing over here. It's even more thickness. Let's just view it orthographic orthographically from the front. Box select just the middle region over here and delete all faces. That should do it. And now just to make sure, select all of this, 
move it around a bit on the x-axis and you can see it's all snapped to the mirror plane. Perfect. Of course, it would be nice to add a bit of thickness over here. Let's just snap it right to these vertices over here. Fill in this region. And we're not supposed to see anything else. So this is all nice and capped off. Perfect. Let's actually add another material. This can be based on gray. And we can just duplicate it and call it gray dark. I hope we didn't have another gray dark before. Nope. Just move this down and make it these ones. Ah, except for that one. That's good. Nice. With the bolts, um, yeah, I might just replace them. Let's add new cylinders. And these ones will be eight sided. Rotating it 90 degrees from the front, scaling it down over here, and then rotating it, what, uh, 22 degrees, 22.5, 22.5 degrees, so that they nicely align. We can sink them, a, yeah, I can, I can sink them a bit into the object. And then, of course, add the mirror modifier. There we go. Oops. Um, select all of these objects and actually make them flat shaded. Just for now. Let's compare it actually with the with a turn around. I'm actually gonna merge these two pieces of the of the backpack. From the side view they perfectly align. From the front view, not perfectly. But there's always be going to be a bit of imperfection. Like that line doesn't really match. So that's a bit weird. Yeah, might also be, yeah, it's also because the backpack is not perfectly centered. We can actually just scale it up along the x-axis just a little bit so that it matches a bit more with the, with the concept. And then the mask, it's all pretty much there. Shouldn't be any noticeable problems with the overall propor proportions. Um, yeah, just double checking. The backpack still needs some love. That's definitely a to do. And the mask has some weird curvature going on over here that we should try to fix. I wonder if I can just use the smooth tool to smooth it out a little bit. Might just make it worse. 
Yeah. Let's just undo that. It's safe. I at least want to try it. What if I just sculpt it? Ah, uh, shake smooth. Um, I'm also going to copy and apply this modifier and enable bisect. It's just going to work better in sculpt mode. This way we can sculpt on either side. And it's just going to apply it. Might actually might actually change to single color and use a different matte cap. It's way better to detect surface imperfections. This is pretty much my favorite. I kept it from 2.79. It's really hard to look at uh, for a long period of time because it's so high contrast, but it is incredibly helpful. Let's actually hide all of these extra facial elements for now. Actually, I might put them in a different collection. So let's just change over here. We have a bit, of, a bit bigger outliner. Let's just call this temp face. This is probably not the best way to do it, but I saw it like uh, multiple people are doing it the hard way, <laughs> where when you really want to have something spherical or like rounded, you need to do a lot of little tweaking on top of it, especially if poles are involved. And once you have these little poles, it just becomes difficult. There's no way around it. Or at least if you know one, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I love this matcap with a gradient from white to black, back to and then just around the the edges, back to white and then back to black. It really gives you this nice look at the surface curvature. First, when you're looking at it straight from the front, from white to black, and then if you're just looking at the edges, again, white to black. So useful. Incredibly ugly, and it hurts my eyes, but it's very useful. Also good to note, like, I added a couple of other custom matcaps. They're, some of them really close to the, the default ones, but still. Okay. I can add this back to shade flat. I actually want to look at the original one. And uh, it's hard to tell. Well, the backpack. 
Actually, a thing I should like I would like to add right now, just to the mask to already try it, is a bevel modifier. It's just this is not a bevel modifier, bevel, and then based on angle. Actually, based on weight, because then I can add edge bevel weight with Control E. And then I can define the width. And this is just to add this, that nice little bevel to catch the light at the edges. We can kind of add it. Uh, yeah, I am going to add it um, as just about as thick as the detail on the belt, just to have a little bit of consistency. So that would be 0 0.008. So eight millimeters. Oh shit, this thing is huge. <laughs> That's also something I, that needs to be done at the end. Just changing the, the overall scale of the character, making that Something to changing it to something that makes sense. <laughs> it's really important to do just before the rigging starts at the very latest. Okay, same thing over here. Mm, okay. Adding a bevel modifier based on. Let's actually try just based on angle, even though that might not work that well. Mm, let's turn off clamp. 008. Apply the scale, definitely, otherwise the. Uh, the distance over here, the offset, doesn't mean anything because it's based on the object scale. Yes, that's not gonna work. So it needs to be based on weight. And bevel weight, one, there we go. Yeah, and now we see it's always that nice edge to catch the light. A similar thing is also in the concept. If we look at that again, if we zoom in, you can see there's a slight beveled edge. It's gonna help a lot. Just gonna turn all of these back to shade smooth. Also with the torus and the turtleneck. Nice. Oh yes, and this one can have the same modifier stack as this one but not with the smooth should have that beveled edge but this i'm just gonna set it based on angle huh something strange is going on with this one Maybe it's because of the N-Gon. Yes. 
It's because of the end gone. I'm also going to get rid of this side. Slide this. Actually, get this further in here outside. Hmm. It's not baffling all edges. With Control, Shift, Alt, and Select, you can select rings. It sometimes becomes handy, but I get why it's the most complicated shortcut. Ah, uh, it's the mirror modifier, of course. Could have seen that coming. Yeah, I think I'm gonna not add these guys. Let's change that back to minus one. Yes. I think the feet can still be a bit adjusted. Just watch them from below because right now they have this really straight edge over here. And if we just, if I just pull it a bit further to the front, that's actually options, use deform only. Oh, of course, this, we left, I, I keep referring to we as if this is not a full on tutorial. <laughs> uh, I left a little end gone over here. It's not good. Let's just split these little faces over here. Ah, and it doesn't quite match. Actually, let's just delete these faces. Control F, grid fill. Add one span. Yeah, this is enough. Oh, and then of course, assign it the right material. Uh, black. There we go. This needs to be scaled up. And yeah, with a topology brush, just a bit smoothed. I. Again, I love this brush. <laughs> there we go. Let's just slide this a little bit. Yeah, I want I want to crease this area. I might just... Mm. I might, might just go in with... What's going on over there? I think I actually need to disable auto smooth. Yes. And now... Crease this area a little bit. Same thing over here. Hmm. Yes. It's looking well, or at least well enough. Yeah, I can crease this a bit more. And then the thumb. Yeah, the, th the thumb is okay. Could be better. But we can... Yeah, I'm going to model it a bit cleaner later on. 